you have something like this. Uh, apart from, uh, what's your name, Seth? Let me check. Apart from Imam or the person that spoke last, is everybody fine? Can you load your data set? Is it very important that you should be able to, this is another thing that you must be able to do. Even if you don't understand the code, the meaning exactly, now it's still fine. You can learn it, but you must be able to load your data set. It's very, very important otherwise. Apart from uh, Ozioma, can any other person also load their data set? Are we fine? Yes. Excellent. Then I can go on. Thanks. So the first thing you want to do, you know, you do. You guys don't have library tid tidyverse. I just put it there. It should have come up because tidyverse include dplyr, ggplot. You know, but for teaching session, it should have come up. But you can always run it again. It doesn't matter. So the first thing you want to do is to create binary variables because what we have currently from our data set are just a list of continuous variables. You have the mental head scores, I'll show you, and you also have the uh, numbers of hours. Where is the mental head score? You could see my your, your second, this column, hours worked, you have it. It's still not in binary form. Uh, less than 80, greater than 80, it's still not there. And your mental health score is still continuous for each maybe resident doctor. They've not been categorized into binary. So that's the first thing we want to do because we want to run uh, a logistic regression here. So this is the code for it. I will try and explain this code, but if you don't understand it, uh, I have a simpler code that I wrote and I can show you. So our how DS is the data frame. Then ours GT80 is the new uh, variable that we want to create. So we want to create a variable that we, that we have two categories, greater than 80, less than 80. There's a function in R called if else. If Ozioma is 20 years, put her as adult, hence put her as a child. That's what, that's the kind of way this condition means. And it's saying if, you break it in your head. This if s means if was the first statement. Uh, is na is, is not available. That's what na means. Dot is I can change this dot to rds. I'm just saying since I've piped, I've carried the whole data frame into this this command. I can I may not write it out again. I just put dot. It's it's just telling me that you know this hours worked, which is a variable, is in this data frame rds. That's what pipe is me. That's what pipe me. Pipe is saying carry out the SDO data frame and use the if s function to manipulate it. What are you going to manipulate? You are not specifying. Is dot na is anywhere you see na in the column hours worked, then change it to na, write na there. That's what it means. Then the next condition is else. But yeah, because it's a bit, this is a bit I, will, I, can, I can show you. I could just say, I will show you something simpler. He's saying S, another if else. If the hours work is greater than 80, change every, every row where the hours work is greater than 80 to one. Yes, keep it at zero, change it to zero. That means if you see 81, all 81 will now appear as one. All 79, 70, 80, 76 will now appear as zero. This is what this means. You know, if I run it, I will show you what we are saying. That we've created, forget this warning, it's fine. We've created uh, a new variable called hours GT80. So if I check my data frame, I'm going to, I must see that hours GT80. You could see this was not there before. And you could see 0, 0, 001. And if you go horizontally backward to, this is hours, to hours, the first two, rows were saying zero, zero. So that means it must be 80 or less than 80. Where's hours work? It should be beside it. Okay, you look at hours work. 80, 50, 70, 0, 0, 0, 91 changes to one. So that's what this command mean. When I saw this, I was like, that could be a simpler way to a more basic way. You don't have this, but I copy this for you. You could also do the same thing. The first thing I did here is, for me, I want to convert into binary variable, either greater than 80, either zero or one. So what I did there is to say, 
are there even in my column hours work are there those that they did not write anything empty shares or maybe they wrote na is there so i say is na in hours worked if it is there turn it to na so if i run which which is saying that it can tell me specifically maybe row 50 row 80. so when i run this yeah, this afternoon it told me immediately that there is nothing, you know, none of my lines, you could see logical zero. That means there is no rule, there's no observation where uh, for hours worked that there is no number there where you where it is empty. So I already know that. So that means if I go back to this code that was written by Jibola, this first condition, if I delete it, I don't need it, but it's fine to leave it here in case you may be dealing with more complex data set that, that you have NAs. So that is why we put this NA. That please, if there is an empty empty cell, let me use that word. Please use NA. But when I run this simpler code, I already know that there is no LA. Then I jump to there is another function called mutate. You use it, it's part of the Dipla package to create new variable. So I'm saying my data frame RDS is, you know, like move it, mutate it. If I can delete this like this as you start with mutate. But the problem with this is that when I manipulate it, I will not see my RDS again. So you have to tell it that this is just saying that manipulate it, but retain every other one that I didn't tell you to manipulate. Then mutate, what do you want to mutate? What's the data? It is still RDS I want to mutate. Then I'm creating a new variable called hours GT 80. It's equal to if else. Is a function. If my hard years, then I specify hours work is greater than 80, please change it to this. You know, is a category, the first part of the binary outcome greater than 80. Hence, if it's not greater than 80, put it as these categories minus or equals to 80 hours. So if I run this, this two line code is equivalent to the next four line code that was written for you here uh yeah you know you start with a two by two you've created your gt uh the first time so but i would i would just say just forget it you, you just hear that you know jibala is now trying to convert the 80 change the 80 to greater than 80 hours you know which we could do with a one line code but just just to show you that there are so many ways by the time you also understand how you can manipulate it you can go for the simpler ones you know so just to show, but let's continue. So with the code that you have, you don't have these two code, so it's fine. It's just a more straightforward way. So you've done this. We have converted those that are greater than 80 hours to category one, and those that are less than 80 hours or equal to 80 hours to category zero. So we could see we could, we could see this already in our data set like I showed you guys. So jump in this. So the next code you have here, code chunk is to say, we want to do the same thing for our outcome variable. We want to convert it to a binary uh, variable. That means the scores of the mental health scores, we want to break it down. If it's greater than 20, we say it is severe mental health. If it is less than 20, we say it is not severe mental health. You know, so that's what this, you could see is the same code. We are saying that creating this severe mental health as a column severe.mh on within this data frame RDS is the is by piping the whole data frame RDS. This RDS is no more the RDS that we have at the initial stage because the RDS we have now has included the last variable I created. You know, we created a variable. If I open this for you, this hours GT80 is the new RDS. So as you move down in your R code, the last command, the last manipulation is carried forward, you know? So we manipulate the ideas, but I'm saying this ideas, pipe it into this new command. So the new command is that, please take the column mental head score and for all NA, for all is dot NA, if it's true, replace it with it NA. Hence, another if else, if the mental head score is greater than 20, please change it to one. Hence, keep it at zero. So if I run this code, I expect that we are going to have a new variable called severe.mh, which you don't have. But severe.mh will now appear as 0 or 1. 
then you know what it means. If you run it here or you run it on your own computer too and check back your data set or your, your data frame, you're going to have what you don't have before, severe.mh. So this is our outcome, one, one. If you scroll down, some will be zero, definitely. You could see zero. And if you look, try to look for the mental health score, the zero must be equivalent to greater than less than 20. Uh, yes, 18, this is zero. This 27, which is the second column from what we can see, if you go and look for it, it must be one. Second column under severe is one. So it's, we are just like what we, what we call recoding in uh, SPSS. We are just recoding here, that's what we are doing here and creating a new uh, useful variable for us. So now we have the two variables, the two, we've converted our continuous uh, variable for mental health score and for hours worked into binary uh, variables. That means we can run our chi-square. But the first thing you want to do is, for example, you can run a table and you could see that is the new variable, variable that is showing whether the, the two hours GTAT and severe MH, and you just run a table and uh, just run it the same way. And you could see it's showing us 0101. And uh, this is not descriptive enough. You want it to be more informative. You want to be able to see your tables showing those that are greater than 80 and those that have severe mental health, even though we both understand 01, but it's not intuitive enough. It's not informative enough. And uh, the next step will do that. The next step is now replacing, just like, you know, this is a long process, uh, but it's still fine since you're just learning it. But for those that already use R, this is, this is, is needless. So it's not that you're changing, it. instead of one, you change it to greater than 80 or less than 80, you know? So that's, we are doing exactly the same thing. So what you are doing there, you could have done it you know, up there. So if you do this, and uh, you do this for the second variable, severe image. But what has, something has changed here. X is added here. X is added here. Just to show little difference, you know, but it's the same thing. You could just have used, I could just have come here, yeah, and say, instead of one, I change it to greater than or equal to it, it will give me the same thing. Instead of zero, okay, this is severe method. I can change this as like this to, you know, I can say severe mental, it's, I don't know, something like this. So all those steps are needless. By the time you have, you, you know, your, your, you understand your how. And uh, so the four steps that we've been going through is what a line command there, a, just one of these will have done instead of changing to zero one, just for you to appreciate that. If you have any question, please, you could stop me at any point in time. You must be able to also get this result on your computer because this is hands on. You must be able to, you know, uh, reproduce it uh, when you are practicing it. And if you don't understand any line of our code, I can re-explain it. So let's go on. So what we've done here is just to change, instead of having zero one, if you look at your console zero one, in the column or for our table, you want to change it to, you want the columns to be for the uh, outcome variable, that's a dependent variable stress, severe or non-severe, and your rows to be the hours were greater than 80 and less than 80. And you see it there, you know, it's the same thing. I think we've run this already. Then uh, we can now try to do the table again. It's just the same table of hours and severe of, of the variable outcome variable. We should give you this is what we are, this is all we are trying to do. You see, to change 0, 01 0, 01 to these categories, the binary categories, either for the independent or the uh, outcome, the predict the other the predictor or the outcome. So you can also even do proportion put percentages in the cell. I'm sure you will have done this. I think for the other session I took, we did this. So you just use prop.table. Table one is the result. That's what we call this table. You know, this table that we drew. 
we 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 named it as an object table one. So our as a memory, you can always recall it. So this table one, that's what we are doing here. Do the proportions or the percentages to table one. Then one is saying if you put comma one, you are saying the rows usually like that in R. The two is the uh, the columns. That's what we are doing here, and you could add percentages to it. This is just more like descriptive, which I expect that they will have taught you. You guys have gone through, and you could see the percentage. Percentage in in rows, sorry, in rows, you could see it. It amounts to 100 percent, 11.8 and 88 points, whatever, 31 and this, and in columns, 44 plus 55, 44.8 plus 55.2 will give you 100. So simple stuff, just for you to see how you can manipulate your stuff in case you need that information for your descriptives. Then running chi square, the function you use is called chi square dot tests. And the good thing about how, by the time you know the function, you know, I could type chi square dot test like this. If I do like this. And there's something called, um, what I want to say is that there's something called, in R, there's something called app, question.app. How can it can tell you what should come first? What should come first should be, you want to do a chi-square test, it should be the uh, outcome variable, outcome binary variable, which is in this case, severe.mh. What should follow it should be the predictor, the independent variable, which is the categories of the numbers of hours worked. We have two categories now. Then you say, uh, correct is equal to false. Correct here is talking about the uh, continuity correction that we do for chi-square. We don't want a continuity correction. If you say false, you don't want a continuity correction. Uh, if you say true, you want a continuity correction, you know? So it's fine, just say false. These are just like uh, what I would call standard, but you should know it. You should try when you're learning how, know what each of those function, what it means, and it's very easy. If I go, if I open my computer, you can see my computer now. I want to open like, uh, say, just a minute, please. Can you still see my computer? I'm, I want to open the web browser and show you something. Can you see my computer? Can you see what I'm typing? Hello, can you guys see what I'm typing? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see it. So if I say chi-square test in R, that's how to learn R in R. You see a lot of, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something. So somebody can look at anything. People, there must be, uh, so you, I don't, just to know the syntax. So you could see, this is not, uh, you know, it's not explanatory enough. You could go to. I don't know if it's just people, I can just see your email. Oh, okay. Hold on. I don't know if it's just me or if it's everybody. It's my yeah, I can also see your mail to the moment. Okay, okay. I understand now. Okay, no problem. I'm coming. Just a minute. Now, you could see I'm trying to open my browser. Can you see what I'm typing? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. you could see chi square testing R. Let's say you don't know. I'm just, you know, that there is no magic to learning R. You have to learn a lot on your own. A lot of, you know, codes are online, you know. So you could look for it online like this and somebody you look for, or you could even use, no, this is not good. I'm rushing because we're doing, you could use for data camp. There are standard uh, stats and R. I just, I, I'm, I'm driving at something. Uh, you could say code ggplot. Just a minute. Okay, yes. So I could come here and say, see how the codes that people have written for chi square. You know, I could see it like this, or even go to how itself. How has like a where you downloaded how to the how can they have like a like a repository of how the codes so you could go online and try and learn 
normally they will explain what each of these, what chi-square means, what should come first, that data dot species is exact, it must be the outcome variable, you know, and this person, for example, is not even specifying whether there should be a continuity correction or not. I normally have, there are some are like, uh, they are like uh, presets, but sometimes you have to change what is preset, I will show you. So what I'm just trying to do is sometimes if you don't know something, just go online and follow, uh, what, uh, follow what other people have done. You'll be able to appreciate and apply to your own work. So that's what I was trying to say here, that if you don't understand, for example, what correct does first, if you go online, you're going to see it. So let's run this so that I don't waste time just to show you. If you run this, uh, run please. So it's a piercing chi-square test. You know when you use a chi-square because in this case, you know the limitation of chi-square, we cannot estimate. So you could see it's telling us these are data that is from RDS. This dollar sign, when you see that dollar sign is when you want to extract a specific column in the data frame. And uh, so you are looking at severe and hours, and it's already giving us the chi-square statistics, 9.002 degree of freedom. And it's already telling us that the p-value is less than 0 0.05, which is habitually, you know, the level of significance. So what this tells us, since you've done so as some days will be easy. Can anybody interpret this quickly? I should not be saying it. Anybody, if you know it, just say it so that we can move forward, please. Anybody? Unmute. Going, going. 10 seconds, six seconds to go. Anybody? Four, two. So this is a chi square. You know, if you remember what we said at the beginning, chi square can tell us whether there is actually an association, a relationship. In this case, we are looking at is there a relationship between the numbers of hours worked and developing severe mental stress? So since we, we are testing for our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis is that there is no significant association between the numbers of hours worked and developing severe mental stress. Let me change that. There is no significant association between uh, working more than 80 hours or less. There is no difference, sorry, let me use that word. There is no difference in the development of uh, mental stress between those that work more than 80 hours and those that work less than 80 hours. Because with this p-value, you have to reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is saying, sorry, sorry, I missed that, I reversed it. The null hypothesis is saying that there is no association. But since our p-value is far, far less than 0 0.005, you have to reject the null hypothesis. So we are saying truly there is an association between the numbers of hours worked and development of severe mental stress. Is that correct? Is that understood, guys? You take it again, sorry. The our p-value is 0 0.0026. It is less than 0 0.05. I'm sure you've heard of this. When your p-value is less than 0 0.005, it means that you have to reject the, the null hypothesis. Agreed? Because yes. if it's a, So, and what is our null hypothesis here? Null hypothesis, usually, there is no difference. It's not greater than, or it's not less than, depending on whether you're using a two-day test or a one-day test. So our null hypothesis for this is that, for the two categories, of hours worked of resident doctors. Some resident doctors work more than 80 hours, maybe per week. Some work less than 80 hours. We've broken them down into two categories. We want to see, is there a difference in uh, their outcome, in their experience, in terms of mental health? But because our, our null hypothesis means that there is no difference. That's what null hypothesis assume in their experience of mental health. But our result here is telling us that you have to reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is less than significance of 0 0.05. So chi-square is telling us that there is, a, there is an association between the numbers of hours worked and mental stress. That means we can start thinking, does it mean that people that work more, we have more mental, we likely have mental stress develop, or people that work more 
are, are more like they are, their brain is more active, you know, they're exercising their brain. They would less likely have mental stress. We don't know it yet, but there's an association between numbers of hours worked and mental stress. Is that clear? So here you have to reject the null hypothesis. And if you agree with me that we have to reject the null hypothesis, then you have to know what is our null hypothesis. If you go up quickly and read the introductory description, yeah, you are interested in examining the relationship between severe mental distress and the hours worked. So your null hypothesis is that there is no relationship. Clear? And yes. excellent. So that's not hypothesis. Now, based on your result, when we run the chi-square test, yeah. Just a minute, as you can see, yeah. Our p-value is 0 0.002667. That is far less than 0 0.005. When you run a statistical test and your p-value is lower than your level of significance, in which case is 0 0.05, yeah, you have to reject the non-hypothesis. So we are rejecting the non-hypothesis. So there's actually a relationship between the numbers of hours worked and development of and severe mental stress. That is what this chi-square is telling us. And that is, the, and the limitation of a chi-square is that it will not give us an estimation. If there's a relationship by how much, what is the odds, for example, of those that are working more than 80 hours, per day, what is the odds of them developing you know, severe mental stress? That is what a chi-square test cannot tell us. It can only tell us if there's a relationship. That's, that's the only thing it can tell us, or there's no relationship. After that, chi-square is silent. Clear, guys? Yes. Yes. Thank Excellent. You.